Okay, what do we got going on then? Um, so we played the Maya Keeper with Contestant Sylvanas. Makes some sense. Mm -hmm. Problem is, it feels like he's kind of trying to do something. Ooh, that's a huge one. So this is probably in Zothrog, I would guess. Uh, I've seen the hut still is there, I've seen this. Feels like that's what it's most like. Um, I did not have a good answer to this can in hand. It's going to be taking 5 damage here. Um, it's interesting. I'm going to choose to kill the. Uh, kill the. hit his face, which I think probably would have been a good idea. But maybe that's just because I see the texture from Shay's hand. Like if you see Shay's hand, you don't really want to be trading him because you know he wants to be trading him. Um, Red Metal's good. Summoning stone, oh, that's not sure. Um, so that's an up to 9 mana next turn, so if we can... What, like, summoning stone, raven idol, which will kill against the raven idol? At least you can play the yoga team, so maybe it might be a state of the board as is right now, but I'm not sure how many spells he's going to play. It's not going to be a very big yoga. Um, here comes uh, a healer. So that's a pretty good draw, so now he can play this, uh, play the Wrath, and play the Power of the Wild as well, if he wants to. Um, the way it works is if he chooses to make his minions bigger, he'll actually get the minion before the Power of the Wild resolves, and it's a minion that doesn't actually benefit from, from the growth. Yeah. We would have liked to hit something a little bit better there. Um, I don't know if he has taunt makers in his deck. Uh, he does, but uh, potentially it works out okay anyway. We saw T. I wonder what that hit. Who knows? Shadow strikes. So he's going to take out the summoning stone. This is no more value from the Raven Idol. Um, this is interesting. I think, how many spells has he played this game? He's played like. But living room's on the one. He's played maybe four spells this game. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's that few. Which is just not that exciting for a young mm -hmm. So he's quite incentivized to try and play these first, especially because this is two spells. Yeah. Um, Savage War. Savage War isn't really doing anything. He can already trade and attack this in here. All he would be doing with Savage War is using an extra card. On the same function. Another mic uses it to discover a spell for an answer. Perhaps to the uh, can on the board. Picks up a claw. Time waits for no one. Chose that over the savagery. So we might work with the sub draw, I suppose. And that's a card on the board. Um, so there's nothing over his hand for now. 
Power of the Wild, minus the power of the Super 2. Not the most exciting Power of the Wild card. Assassinate takes out Rogue. Not seen that many assassinates from Rogue. Um, it might be my up from the out of the stand of the Something like that combo card. Not now. So he's going to go for Thoris and Lime. Probably like Thoris and Lime and a bit of Lime Keeper. It gives him actually quite a substantial reward here. One assassinate already used. Um, no sign of any satchel. Yeah. Problem is, as his health gets lower, the health strain gets more and more dangerous. Yeah, he really doesn't want to wait too late into the game to cast that. But yeah, he will if he has to. Because a lot of things going slightly wrong mm. for him here. Oh, it's just had so many cards. Ah, so the assassinate was what got hit by the Thistle so there's another assassinate in hand as well. That's pretty scary. Uh, he poison to take down 3-3 three, three and threaten with 2-2. Two, two. Or he might trade in the, this guy, his, his pantalons with 3-3, three, three, and then take out the 3-2 in his weapon set and fly. Because either way the pump trades, so seems the sensible play. And it's just really hard for to get value off the side of the draw right now. Counting so, uh, to keep the creatures on the board. The uh, Thistle Keep Assassinate is really pretty brutal for him here. So I think at this point he's just going to play the odds around the question. Let's go to the first. No, uh, the odds first. He chooses not to. Mulches. What a great start. So if Wacos is 7 5, he wants to get around the creature. Wacos is 5 6, he gets 2 cards. Spectacular yogs are on so far. <laughs> Three damage to the go. Forgotten Torch itself. Summon the sun. And turn on the middle of the ball with charge. Dragon to break all of the strings. No, himself. There's Snipe. The creature plus zero. But <laughs> shuffle three by four. I'm going to trade it back. Plus another. Effigy. I mean, zero hounds, lava shop itself. Oh yeah, he can. He actually has lethal this turn. He can. So he charges the druid of the claw, plays the power of the wild, innovate, savage roar, swipe your face, kill you from thirty. I, I, I think that works, right? So uh, this is five. This will be doing five, two and one, um, five, ten, fifteen. He'll be doing. Uh, this guy will be doing. Oh my gosh! I think he missed lethal. I think he missed lethal, right? 5, 10, 15, plus 4 uh, is 19, plus 3 is um, 22, plus 2 on himself, 
four. Should be eight. So he was two damage off. Oh man. Well, that's not the worst. Uh, given the texture of his hand right now. Oh boy. Uh, does he have lethal now? I think he's lost a creature, which makes it more difficult for him to have lethal now. Oh, plus this guy. Oh, he, he's transformed. So now he's come back into the hand as the 4-6, he can't play it as the, as the creature he needs it to be anymore. Wow, what a crazy thing. So he would have left himself with... Wasn't it better to play it? I suspect he's dead here, right? Like, on the swing back. Uh, you just trade in, say... Well played. Five seven and three two or two My three time. five nine. Oh, and yeah, he's definitely dead. No, yeah, because he has the last assessment for this as well. He's still waiting in his deck, so Oh wow, what a crazy game. Um, and I don't think Info should even realises how close he was to just being dead there. Uh, I just want to go through that one more time to work it out. It's four plus three is seven. Plus uh, so that guy's doing 7 damage. The other three are doing 5 damage each, so 15, 22, 24, yep. 1 damage off lethal. I can't tell you exactly what's going on. Uh, I can tell you that this is not the most exciting hand, although that innovates quite good here. You can innovate out of your claw on a subsequent turn. You're probably just going to bite face this turn and think of anything better to do. You're not going to innovate out of spike or anything completely insane like that. So you're probably just going to hero power, hit face, and then you'd be sitting there counting the team whether or not that was actually lethal, but it, it was not. It was 15 plus 7 is 22 plus 2 from your hero getting Savage Raw, and then it was 24 plus, no it was 28, I'm sure it was 28, 15 plus 7 plus 2 plus 4, yeah. So actually it wouldn't have helped if he had gone for it, except that he would have had a huge board as well, it would have been probably quite difficult for his opponent to deal with. Uh, so yeah, here comes the uh, Innovative Andrew, just to do that, even though the opponent plays a Sorcerer's Apprentice, which is a relatively threatening minion, but not like a Flame Waker or something, that he absolutely has to deal with, not that he could have dealt with Flame Waker in an efficient manner anyway. Uh, plus he's kind of have 3 mana, so I'm not sure what I'm talking about. Implosion. Uh, this is a very nice turn for him, it's to kill the... Uh, there, 
Oh, doesn't quite finish it off, so that means that Shay can potentially swipe the Flame Waker. Um, which is good, and the next turn that sets him up to... Well, he, he can Wrath the 3-1, but he might want to be saving the Wrath for the Summoner's Stone. Summoner's Stone is such a sweet card. Um, yeah, next turn's not obvious what it is he wants to do. He might pick... He probably doesn't want to just run out the Azure Trade, because then this 3-1 can trade into it and can gain it, and that's not actually a very good turn for him. Um, what he might do here is... Hero power down the 3-1, wrath the 2-3. You don't get the value off the summoning stone, the summoning stone begins to look a little bit dead in hand, but uh, it's the most resource effective way of dealing with the minions that are board right now. It's a little bit of a shame that he has to use his spell while he's a violet teacher and the summoning stone in hand and get value out of either of them, but just the way that the board worked out. I'm not sure that was any very good oh wow, that's super good. <laughs> So now he gets a random spell to play with his thing. Uh, Effigy's not a bad spell to get here either with his hand full of high cost minions. Like, he's going to get minimum, well I suppose not minimum 4 drop because uh, either one of these, if he plays it with the uh, Effigy, is going to give him a small minion, either a 1 1 or a random 2 drop. So looks like the spell that he picked up is not something he wanted to play, that Enclosure picked up is not one that he wanted to cast this turn, so he doesn't. He plays instead the uh, hero power of the face. So here it's like a shapeshift in his opponent's face. Um, implosion can potentially pick this off with a fireball. That's what he doesn't want to see, probably the most um, uh, It looks like, oh, Arcane Glass. Well, that's pretty, pretty sick here. Uh, gets to Arcane Glass and Cain kill the. 3-5, that was going to a bit threatening, and then hit face for 3 as well. Oh, Innovate! Well, Innovate's interesting. So you can, as a drink, and wrap for 4 on the spell slinger, which is the it looks like he's going to make. And next turn, he can Innovate out Yogg Sauron if he really wants to. Or he could have, he could have Innovated Wild Group that turn, I'm not really sure why he would do that though really set you up for anything. It sets you up for Yogg's Run on turn out it. Oh my god, a second arc in love? Holy crap, this guy's putting some work. Uh, resurrect from his first slinger, which finally hits a 3-2. Interesting note there is he maybe wanted to um, resurrect first on the off chance that he hit the uh, the this guy's toes. The, this guy because then he could have got an extra point damage with his, with his uh, hero power. Um, the way this works out, he's decided to use... Oof. So if you turn that in the opposite order, he'd have got the mag juggles. You probably can't play for that. There's no reasonable way you can think, oh, I could put the say juggles here. No, it's just not a thing. The problem with what he's done here is that he's going to get a random zero off his effigy, uh, which is not the most exciting thing ever. Maybe... Maybe he, his opponent chooses to like trade into the Night Juggler or something, but no, he's just going to play an Arcane Missiles. This could still work out for him. No, kills the 1-1, one -one. gets a, a random 0 drop, hits a 1-1. One -one. Um, oh god, he even hits the fucking Sorcerer's Apprentice Juggler, which is probably the worst juggler. Oh my god. Wow, that's brutal. So, I think you're on the yogg and Hope plan at this point. Um, Hoping for a slightly better one than last game, where he gave his opponent three cards, shuffled three one ones into his deck. Uh, yep. Well, as I said, that last one didn't work out so badly because it did at least put three bodies on the board for his bus to to work with. Um, there comes your. Oh, I'm so excited. Polymorph himself. Morphle coil himself. <laughs> Soul of the Forest for the rubbings. Uh, it turns it down to a 1-1, one -one, then into a 2-1. Okay, different one. It does get a bite, so that's nice. Elemental Destruction kills both the creatures on the board. And that's it. So, 10 mana. Move for game 4, draw a card. Uh, and I suppose kill your opponent's 2-1-1s. 
it, not like a disaster, but it was goddamn low impact. <laughs> Immediately polymorphs himself. It's like, you know what? Fuck this life. I didn't want to be a old oh god. I wanted to be a sheep. This is a really dangerous situation. If his opponent has double fireball in hand, or top decks the Roaring Torch, or this Forgotten Torch he's just played with a fireball in hand, then the status quo just dies if he plays the obvious play, which is Maya Keeper, Maya Keeper, Power of the Wild. Uh, and for that reason, he's not actually choosing that line. Maybe looking for like Healing Touch. Uh, Feral Rage is interesting. Feral Rage would heal him eight, uh, which is probably what he wants here, uh, evolve scales, does so, um, and now he can make the slime pack for one attack base. So that was a really, really good uh, Raven Idol there. Uh, takes him out of lethal range of two fireballs or fireball, fireball, or fireball roaring torch. Um, so there's probably not any realistic way he dies this time. Now there's the second forgotten torch, which is actually going to get quite scary at this point. Pings down this 2-1. That's an interesting line. Um, it's not going to work out very well for him because he has the Maya Keeper. Oh, he's not going for that line. I would thought it's actually quite appealing um, to set up the power of the wild. Uh, it's certainly what I would have done. The reason being that um, yeah, you get wrecked by a second flame strike, but you set up a big board uh, and you probably get more value out of your power of the world than you're going to get again. He's definitely going to ping that this turn. He wouldn't ping it the last turn if he wasn't planning on pinging it this turn. So you actually just kind of negate his ping from last turn, get in for 3 damage, an extra point of damage. Um, and really start pressuring his life total. Now you're like, oh wow, that's a hell of a top deck. So never mind. Uh, and now you make a shit ton of 3 threes. You still get all wrecked. You get absolutely annihilated by a flame strike, but what are you going to do, right? This is clearly the line. You put a whole bunch of power. You're not going to get more value out of the power of the world by holding it. You have to play all those cards to make any one of them good. Uh, you could just play the Maya Keeper, but that's so passive. It probably doesn't end up winning the game. And if his opponent doesn't find like a Frost Nova off that, I think he's just dead. Like, this is 9, yeah, he's way dead. 9 plus 8 plus s uh, 7 plus 7 plus 4 plus 1. It's like 14, 22. Yeah, it's miles more than lethal. So I think even with this dying, this is probably lethal. So 2, 4, 6. Uh, so 12, 14, 16 just from these, plus 4, 7, 10. Yeah. Uh, that will be the game here, Double Savage Roar, still proving just how terrifying it is even without its bloody uh, force of nature to back it up anymore. Boom. swings across for 7 points of damage, and Implosion is taken down. Implosion's mage is taken down and the Druid gets his victory. So what do we have now? Well, I know we've got... I saw the Shaman deck of Status Quo win, and I've seen the Rogue deck of Implosion win, and I've seen the Sh Druid deck of the Status Quo win. Um, so, and it's Conquest, which I think... Is Conquest the one where you have, like, three decks? I think it's the one where you have three decks. So here comes Garrosh again. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, I know it's the one where you have two decks, but I thought it was the one where you had to um, uh, play if a deck lost it was out. But maybe not, maybe it's the other way around. If a deck wins it's out. 
yeah, it must be if the deck leans it out because Shea played his Druid twice in a row and Implosion is now playing his Warrior again. So this is the kind of controlish Warrior it looks like he was playing uh, with double charges, Corcoran leads. Uh, gets rid of the Maligos and the Thorison, not cards you're really looking for in the opener. Double preparation, backstab. Is this is a pretty rough hand here for. Whoa! <laughs> if this wasn't against Warrior with their executes and their whirlwinds and shit, I would say just like make an enormous fang cleave this turn. Uh, you could make coin prep, prep. You could make your fang cleave. Holy crap! Um, Sorry, we have to be this turn to run through this three mana, but you could make your bank leave. Two, four, six, eight. Uh, eight, eight. Um, hmm. You don't really want to be coining out the Tomb Pillager while you have bank leaf in hand. You'd rather be using the coin to make bank leaf bigger, but I think you're sort of forced to do that just because, uh, you know, you're not going to go all in on a massive fan plea for your friends just play the Fierce Monkey. Yeah, this is definitely not Patron Warrior, I think Shay's wrong about that. You don't play just a car and all and any other cards like that. Patron Warrior. So he's just uh, of course this guy gives you a coin as well. Um, so that's something. So you could you could trade this in here. Oh it's weird. He's gonna shiv. He's, he's doing all this just to protect his guy and make his bank leaf bigger. Huh. The shall come so now he has an 8 8 bank leaf. I think you kill the 2 2 here because you don't want to make it easy for him to just like execute. The problem is, it's also dead to shield slam with have him having 7 health, so maybe you're supposed to hit his face so that he's forced to use the execute to kill it. That's uh, not the cruel fast master, so it does look like it's getting executed um, one way or another. It's a bit of a shame, but not the end of the world. He still has the gadget sand auctioneer and the Azure Drake as backup plans. Uh, I think you just like... Oh, what's he doing? Wow, he's actually going to Prep deadly poison? Holy crap, that's aggressive. I'm not sure I like this line. So he's using two cards to kill the Taskmaster uh, just for the tempo hit of being able to keep his 5-1 five, five alive. Um, which, given his opponent has things like the Fiery War Axe, for example. So he got basically, what, 10 damage out of that, which is not nothing. But it did cost him two cards, so he turned two cards into line cards. So I think that's a really, really aggressive line. I'm not really a fan. So here's the Maligos. I suppose there is some value in this deck to just keeping your opponent's um, resources as like. It's keeping your opponent's life total as low as possible. You don't want him just running away with a billion armor like. You, you don't want him just running away with a billion armor because if you do that, then he uh, he gets to he, he might survive your Malagos turn. You're really looking to try and get as much damage as possible because uh, because I guess with Malagos you're probably only dealing. Oh, this crap! I'm just going to trade cards. It's pretty good here. He's probably going to trade both of these guys in here, and this is one of the reasons why. Uh, this line is a little bit awkward because now he can't really deal with this guy efficiently. You could see he wanted to. I got the best deal, but I mean, I think he knew that there wasn't anything he could do about this. He's going to use a sinister strike as a conceal. Well, that's really good. So now he can coin uh, conceal. Um, his opponent does have 11 damage on the board, so he can't be too gung-ho with his life total. I think he's actually supposed to attack with the 5-4 here. Uh, yeah. Um, is he dead to Gromash plus thingy? Gr I can't remember how much damage Gromash does. Gromash is a 4-5 and I think comes with 9 power charges. He's not dead to Gromash plus uh, a damage spell. Well, when you're a blood sticker or something. Eleven. Down to 
11, actually has a new thought on board. Two turn new thought. Right, now a one turn new thought. Um, I'm not sure how he's going to deal with it. He might just sap the Bloodhoof Brave. Play like Emperor Thorison. Maybe trade this guy in here, attack the four. Depends what other cards uh, Implosion wants to play this turn. That's really the problem here is he can maybe draw his board, but like it feels really difficult for him to thumb swing in the game with some armor. Depends what it does. Cards four. Uh, get some extra copy of the Blood Brave. Blood Warriors. It's a sweet card. So, he's going to sap the 5-2. I kind of wondered if he might. Now he can potentially eviscerate the Justicar. Uh, swing in for 4 on the... No, he's going to use that. Okay. Mm. Uh, he okay. One of his problems that he has now, even though he's going to get a discount on these guys, which means that he can play... Uh, so he's going to be able to play Eviscerate, Eviscerate with Malagos on the turn he plays Malagos. Can he play Eviscerate, Eviscerate, uh, Sinister Strike Malagos? That's what, that's 5? 5, 10, 15, it's the 3 spells from Malagos. And then um, Shield Slam takes care of Thorison, so no more than one of those. Oh, Blade Flurry. Can't play that on the same turn as Malagos. So five. Uh, if he waits a turn, he can go Malagos. Oh, he's actually going to do it now. Can he play all of the cards? Yeah, because he has the coin, he can play all of them. So this is eight, nine, nine. Is that lethal? Uh, I never got round to actually working it out. Uh, kept trying to think about it. It's too much to think about. Blade Flurry, of course, doesn't hit face anymore, so you can't Blade Flurry. Is he just going to eviscerate the face as well? The problem with eviscerating face is, again, I'm not sure it really gets you anywhere. Like, it puts him to one, but it's a much different one to the one that he had in that other game. You obviously don't attack anything because you don't want to give these guys the enrage buff. He's already at 11 life. Uh, now he's dead to a Promash uh, haste turn, but I don't think that's really a concern. What he'd like to be able to do here is pick off these guys with the Fan of Knives um, if the Malagos survives. Uh, this monkey also does the Malagos. Wow! So he's actually he's actually just won the game. So he gets the Fan of Knives here and then attack face for lethal. Holy crap! Uh, or Blade Flurry, either one doesn't really matter. If you play Flurry, then you just have to dagger up and uh, attack Lethal. Wow! What a game! I thought he was in serious trouble there. But I sp it's, if Malagos lives, I guess you're always in good shape. But I didn't think Malagos was going to live. I thought it was more likely than not that Malagos was going to die. So that was really well played by, by TSQ there. Uh, proving a me a wrong. Oh my god! He missed Lethal! He played the Azure Drake! He didn't dagger up again and kill him! Holy crap! <laughs> what? <laughs> Just as I was praising him. Uh, 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 did he think he had an extra mana? <laughs> yeah! Well. <laughs> oh well, no worries. <laughs> I'm out of cards. Uh, okay. Just decided to draw his deck for the style points, I guess, and then shift it from his face. Fair enough. He gets there in the end. Slightly rocky road taken to it. <laughs> I can't believe he was lethal that time. So that's three wins for Shea, which I think means he wins the match. Right? That's the way this format works. I never ever claimed to be a professional commentator. I'm just recording a video for the hell of recording a video. I didn't even plan to record a video, I just saw the post was in the thread and was like, 
I'm playing him now. I'm like, oh, cool. I will go and see. Who else is online? New end. Twenty-two. This is no one else playing right now. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, so thanks for watching, if you chose to watch my commentary of the game. It was a bit rambling, but uh... Anyway... Uh, stop recording.